Alright, for the third part of this video I'm going to set up two functions that we're going to use for the base of our interaction system and it'll also give you a good idea of, and a reference point for what the code to set up a function in an interface that allows you to give both the C++ implementation and a blueprint implementation looks like. So, what we need to do, so first of all we're going to put the functions in the iInteractable interface. If you remember we are extending I interactable interface. That's the that's the actual interface. The U part is just for a bunch of stuff that's needed behind the scenes. So we come down just underneath our generated I interface body. The first thing we're going to do is just have a get interact range. So this is going to return a float. It doesn't need to take anything, and that's it. Now the format of this was another thing that. Uh, confused me for a while. Coming in from a C++ context, you'd kind of think it'd look something like this. Uh, so that's your standard interface setup um, function in a C++ class, but I'm guessing a whole bunch of this by default is being added by the macros or something like that because it especially if you want them to work with Blueprint, it doesn't like them. So on top of this function, we're going to add our standard kind of U function macro, which again, this is covered in way better detail elsewhere. But we want it to be a Blueprint callable so we can actually call it in Blueprint. We also want it to be a Blueprint native event. And that is so that we can have both a C++ underlying code structure and Blueprint on top of that. And of course we need the category. Just make that interactable like everything else. And then on top of that, uh, let's make another one, which is the actual interact, so void interact with interactable. Um, let's make this take an actor reference, so interacting actor. So what we've basically said is, you know, true general interface logic. We want to be able to get the interact range of an interactable interface, and we want to be able to interact with these as well. So if we come now back to interactable base, we'll want to copy these and implement them down here. So here we will put in the virtual and override, so it'll throw a compile error if it can't find thing, and the other thing we're going to want to do, now we don't need to do the u property, sorry, u function macro here again because that's already being done when it's declared the first time here, but since this is a blueprint native event, and again this is covered elsewhere, but this actually needs to become implementation instead of just the normal one, and that UE4 does some magic on and tells it to go look for the blueprint implementation first and then come back and run this essentially as the parent function, which we'll get into in a second. So uh, find out interact range or some better comment than that ideally, but that'll do for now. And then we'll just want to copy this as well. Um, interact with the interactable. And again, we can whack that virtual on here now. Override and the underscore implementation. So what we're going to want to do there, so that's our header pretty well done. Next we need to actually implement these in the class itself. So here we don't need to put the override or anything like that on. We do need to put like that. And then essentially here all we're going to do is return um, we set up that variable? Yeah we did. M interact range. Then for our other one let's copy this across. I'm not really going to do anything. 
do all in blueprint. So, those are now our two functions. And we'll see if that is happy to compile or if I've forgotten something. The reason it can be such a pain is because, oh, that, that's all correct, is because things like this underscore implementation on the native events can't make something virtual. If you want to make it blueprint callable, if you ever want to use it in blueprint, you have to make it blueprint callable. So it's just, it was a little um, bit of a mission to find out exactly how this was all meant to piece together. But essentially, this is the system that I've come up with, which is pretty much always what I want. So the tag, you want a blueprint callable, a blueprint native event, and give it a category. You just declare the function as per normal, not virtual or anything like that. And then in the class that's actually implementing the interface, um, the virtuals, you don't actually need that. That's just best practice. And then you need to go your underscore implementation override and make sure that you actually give it a base implementation because the native events, they, they need to have an implementation in code. So now if we come to, I think I said it before, just this interactable test, we should have two brand new things. One is this here. So we've got get interact range, which is picking up from, so if you go to class settings, for instance, we now have the inherited interface, interactable interface, which is exactly what we want. And up here, we right click this and go implement function. So this is probably an example of something you may not need to make blueprint um, a blueprint native event. You may just want to make this, since you don't really want to have to do that. You can just not implement this. So if I just delete this function, it goes back to just its generic code implementation. But it does give you the option to implement and maybe double it or do some weird thing in blueprint if you do kind of want to extend a little bit to that logic. But realistically, that's something that you just keep in code. Um, and then, so if we look for the event interact with interactable, here is our interface message, which is bringing in our interacting actor, which we set as the variable name for that a actor reference that comes in there. So uh, the reason this is an event, as opposed to this being a function, is uh, UE4 and Blueprint, rather, um, makes anything without a return value an event rather than a function. I actually like the functions a lot better because they have categories and it doesn't clutter up your event graph, especially when these classes get bigger, you get like 20 different things. So what I'll generally end up doing is making kind of a, making that a bool for no particular reason and not really caring about what boolean that'll ever actually return. Let's just make it always return true. Um, we can see compile here. And that should convert it to being a function instead of an event. Just, I don't know, the event graph gets messy enough with the input stuff without kind of adding to it. Um, so this probably needs to be closed down and reopened. Let's just quickly double check while that's loading. But with that having a bull return now, it will most likely uh, come up in here. Yeah, so now we have this interact with interactable, which is coming up as a function instead of an event with just kind of a meaningless return value. And I'm fine with that because it keeps you, you know, if you're implementing a bunch of these, you actually have categories and it just, I just find it needed in the event graph. But so there's our two functions. I was going to delete that so that it goes back to the code implementation, but that's how you get interfaces written in C++ kind of working nicely with your code. So now, for example, if we take a player character, uh, we just put a real basic, um, I'm not going to bother setting up too much, but basically, um, hell, uh, I'm going to do something really disgusting and just say get all actors with interface, just because I don't want to set up a kind of detection system. Uh, 
Now we're going to cast to interactable interface. And then from here we can go call interact with interactable. We can pass in self. Now, obviously, you would never ever use that. You'd use a ray trace and return the thing that got hit, but I just don't want to set that up. And if we come over here to interact with interactable, I'm just going to put in a print, which is going to print out was interacted with by get display name on him just to kind of prove that this is all working so now if I press F there's not actually one in the game but now if I press F was interacted with by third person character which is me so that's all working. So that is an interfacing code that you can actually... So um, I know we extended the... Sorry, I know we implemented the code using the code system, but um, you can implement a blueprint set, Sorry, a interface set up like that in here as well. So we can very easily just say implement interactable interface. Boom, now our character is... Uh, an interactable, and this will pop up with those same functions like the um, interactable did. So that's pretty much everything. When I was kind of porting some code from Blueprint across to C++, that's basically what I wanted. So I figured I'd make a quick video of the run through. We didn't end up using this, but essentially, you know, get interact range, make sure you're in range, and then apply. Uh, yeah, sorry, then interact with interactable. But that's how to set it up. So just to recap, essentially, you set up your interface with the uInterface macro, the U class, the I class. Um, you can then implement that interface either the code way or by the blueprint way, just by using the class settings. And then with kind of this setup on the interfaces by going U function, um, native event, callable, and not putting virtual or any equal zero or anything like that. Um, you can then give them a code implementation and then add Blueprint functionality on top of that, and all of that just works pretty much as you want it to. So that's everything. I hope that was helpful, uh, and that's all.